Hi there, this is Hans from Siegecraft Electronics. In my last video, I showed you how to go through the diagnostic routine built in on a Williams System 4 or System 6 machine on the onboard software. When System 7 hardware along, uh, came along, like Black Knight here, there were some variations in how that diagnostics were handled, so I figured I'd come up with a short video here to show you what those changes are, what the differences mean, and I'll uh, show you a couple shortcuts that actually came along here that uh, make things a little bit easier when you're doing it. One of the first changes that you're going to notice here is right within the coin door. You're going to see you still have three switches here. On a System 6 and earlier, you had a toggle switch that went up and down here. It looks like a push button. Doesn't really change too much. It's a latching push button where you have down position, the up position, which uh, correlates to your auto up and manual down. So it doesn't function any different as far as how it works, just a different kind of switch in there. And your advance and your high score to date reset are still momentary buttons like on a System 4 or a System 6 machine. Okay, here we've got the plate field glass removed. Uh, the ball is also taken out of the machine and we are booted up into audit mode here. Which, because it's a System 7 machine with a blue flipper set, you have your number 2 indicator giving you that it's a System 7, uh, System 7 software. Number 500, which is your Black Knight game number, and number 4, which is the ROM revision number. Just as a side note real quick, if anyone has the ROM revisions 2 or earlier, I'd really love to get a copy of those. I've uh, noticed a few things in the play field over the years that show uh, some of the other features that may have been included earlier, but uh, I never actually found the ROM set, so I've never been able to test out to see what they were. And then uh, number four, of course, meaning that you're in audit mode. And with the System 7 game, you have more audits to available to it. 35 of them were in the System 6. System 7 moves you up to 50 audits. Normally, if you went from the highest number back, uh, it kept going up, it would bring you back to the number one audit on a System 6. On a System 7, it's actually going to bring it back into a track mode, which is a great handy feature to have if you're trying to diagnose a problem with your CMOS RAM because it'll let you see right away if it's a battery issue or a ROM, uh, sorry, RAM issue. And as you can see here, it boots right back into a track mode, which is a lot more convenient than shutting the machine off and on and power cycling it real quick, which doesn't always work depending on, on how your hardware condition is. Then your next test is, of course, going to be the display segment test, which if your center button is in the auto up position, it's going to cycle through all the numbers automatically. Put in the manual down, stops on the number, and your advance button cycles through. As an example of what a uh, bad display looks like, my player 3 right here has a couple digits out guessing, so that's what you'll see if there's a problem. Eventually I will replace that, I haven't gotten around to it yet. The next step is going to be a dedicated sound test, as you can see here. Uh, my, my speech is working on Black Knight number 5 and number 6 on this, on this sound test. doesn't give you anything at the moment, so I'll stop there just to make it a little quieter. This is because on the System 7 machines, they moved to having a dedicated PIA chip and sound output header on the CPU board as opposed to the System 6 and earlier where it piggybacked off the solenoid circuits. This let them design in another half a dozen solenoids on the System 7 machines, which is a nice feature to have, and they kept kind of expanding out uh, over the years from the System 7 and, and, and growing on this system further. But it is nice to see that your, your sound test is dedicated uh, because it does have those, have those new outputs on it. Your lamp test here is functionally identical to a System 6 where it just pulses all the controlled lamps at the same time. Another change between the two generations though is that on a System 6 machine, your 1, 2, and 3, 4 player indicators there. A System 6, it would, it would only light up the one that for the actual active player. Because the displays in a System 7 have a lot more software pow power to them, they eliminated the uh, indicator lights here. They're just GI lights and they're never going to change. Solenoid test is again identical to how a System 6 works, where if your button's in the up position, it uh, cycles through them automatically. And if it's in a down position, it does them uh, one at a time, sticking on a particular solenoid. The number 11 that was just before there was the, uh, the GI light control, which a couple of System 6 games at the end had it incorporated in there where they had a, uh, a separate relay in the back box. System 7, Inc., it was a permanent thing where it was built into the power supply board and continued forward from there where GI light control was uh, incorporated in every, every Williams machine from this point forward. 
Uh, number three is the switch test. This is going to be the biggest change and also the more, most useful from how the System 6 diagnostics was handled. In a System 6 game, if you activated a switch or multiple switches, it would keep on the display here the most recent switch that was closed. Meaning that if you had a half a dozen switches in the play field that were closed, it would show them all once, stop on the last one, and then that was it. Here, it's a little bit different where you have the number come up. It also gives you a sound to let you know that that switch is registered. But if you let go of the switch, like I'll do with the spinner here, it stops. So what happened on the System 6 is if you had a stuck switch, it would be really hard to tell because you'd have to start pressing other buttons and, and try to keep track of the pattern as it goes. Here, if you have a stuck switch, it just stays on the screen there. It stays beeping so you know that particular switch is stuck. And if you have multiple switch closures, which we'll do here, and if you can see there, it's, it's switching between number 13 and 45, so you can tell which switches are all closed. On the, on the earlier generation, what would happen was, again, it would show in order the ones that were closed, but it would just stop on that last one, so you'd have to keep going back and try to, try to trick the machine into registering those other switches for you. So this is a much, much more powerful switch test here for you to use. Uh, otherwise, really, you know, that's, there's not much else to it on, in this particular system, not like a WPC or a System 11 where there's a lot more ability to, to check switches here. And then back into your audit mode, which is, you know, we went over a little bit ago. Okay, here we are inside the back box on a System 7 machine. Uh, one thing you're going to notice right away, like on my Firepower, I have an aftermarket power supply board. Really a good idea on a System 7, just because the factory connectors for the GI lights are just so terribly done. Uh, I, this is a completely different style, it uses a uh, System 11 style uh, harness for it. Another option could be, if, uh, if yours is in good shape, either go to LEDs on the, on the GI lighting, or if you don't like the LEDs, look into the lower power incandescents with number 47 bulbs instead of number 44s. The main issue with that power supply connector is just they've tried to put 15 amps through a, a connector rated at 12, so as you can imagine, they almost always fail. I, I've, I don't think I've ever come across a board that's uh, been used in a machine that isn't showing sometimes it's stress or, or just needs complete replacement on the connectors. Now, as you can see, it's the driver board, exactly the same as a System 6. Your sound board's the same as a late System 6 with the speech connected. Uh, you're going to notice you do not have the big power, um, trans power transformer here. Early Black Knight machines will still have that up there, but once they went to the newer power supply board, the transformer was moved down into the back box. Sorry, into the, into the cabinet. Uh, your main difference is on your CPU board. Uh, here is where that additional connector would have been if they ever used that expander board. You're never going to see this field on a System 7 board. Early machines, you're going to see a bunch of dip switches and extra buttons up there for backward compatibility all the way to System 3. Never seen anyone actually use it that far back. Towards the end of the run, Williams decided that it was just completely useless for the whole backward compatibility concept. So all the uh, superfluous parts were removed. So a later System 7 board like this will only work in a System 7 unless you add those components back in. Generally, you're going to have four ROM chips in there uh, unless you have, uh, like on mine here, where I use the Hyperbowl type configuration for more ROM space where it's got three of the 2532E PROMs. Most of the time, you're going to have four E PROMs, uh, three of, of the... I'm sorry, two of the 2532s, two of the 2716s. And over here, instead of the two LEDs on a System 6 board, which earlier machines, again, will have those two LEDs, or you could even add uh, two more for a total of four that give you really good information. But for System 7, I use the seven-segment display here. Normally, you press your diagnostic button. If everything's working okay, it'll blink the number zero once, then shut off. Because I did change the software in mine, it's going to give me a checksum error that I'll show you which uh, locks onto a number 6, which is uh, an indicator of a checksum error, meaning that the, the game ROMs are not showing what they should. A lot more information available on that, uh, particularly with some of the, after, uh, the aftermarket diagnostic ROMs that are out there. Uh, but that is a really not much to show you on the back box of a System 7, though. And that pretty much concludes this video for you. Thank you guys for watching, and uh, I do hope you enjoy the better audio with the new microphone on this one compared to some of the earlier videos. And if anyone has any suggestions on things they'd like to see, drop me a mail at hans at seechcraft.us. 
or visit the website at www.siegecraft.us for the, uh, the various tools and things I have available, repair services and such, and uh, have a nice afternoon.